Our Sunday study of John's third epistle concludes today in these words. Demetrius is well spoken of by everyone, even by the truth itself. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to do it with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon. We will talk face to face. Peace be unto you. The friends here send their greetings. And greet the friends there by name. There are three names in this short, little epistle. St. John is writing to a fellow by the name of Gaius. My dear friend Gaius, whom I love. Gaius happens to belong to a church that is held in the grip of a petty tyrant by the name of Diatrophes. I wrote to the church... But Diotrephes, who loves to be first, will have nothing to do with us. And now he comes to the third name. Demetrius is well spoken of by all, even by the truth itself. There are many fascinating theories about who this Demetrius is. And if I had time, I'd share some of them with you. But all you know for sure about the man Demetrius is told us in this single verse. Demetrius is well spoken of by all, even by the truth itself. Demetrius doesn't need your recommendation. Measured against the yardstick of God's truth, Demetrius can hold his own. What Demetrius says on Sunday, he says and he does on Monday. But the point here is that you can always tell a diatrophies who loves to be first from a Demetrius who's well spoken of by the truth. They can fool you for a little while, but what a person is cannot for long be hidden. John goes on, I have much to write to you, but I do not want to use pen and ink. I hope to come to you soon so that we can talk face to face. That problem with diatrophies has got to be settled. And you settle things face to face. I know you've got a lot of fancy communication tools out there today. Cell phones, email, who knows what all. But there is nothing that ever can take the place of personal, face-to-face -face communication. For we communicate with each other not only by words spoken or written, oh, by the expression on our face by your body language, the tone of your voice, even your hand gestures. He concludes the letter with two blessings. The first is this, peace be unto you. That was the common greeting of the day. You've heard him say, shalom, peace be unto you. But Jesus invested that phrase with new meaning on Easter evening when he said to them, Peace be unto you. Hey, the war is over. The barrier between God and man, between man and man, has been broken down. The full debt of sin has been paid in full for all, forever. You are washed, you are cleansed, you are forgiven. Your heart may be at harmony once again with God, with each other, and even with yourself. That peace cannot be manufactured on your own. It, it comes from outside you. My peace I leave with you. My peace give I unto you, not as the world giveth 
give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. That was a comfort to Gaius, who was caught in a strife-torn congregation. The peace God offers you is not relief from the troubles of this world. But peace, smack dab in the middle of the troubles of this world. And the other blessing is fellowship. Friends, in other words. The friends here send their greeting and greet the friends there by name. We throw the word friendship around a little loosely today. Us, somebody must have done a sales marketing survey and figured out you can sell a person something better if you call them by their first name. So during supper, a telemarketer from Atlanta, Georgia, representing some company I never heard of, and wanting to sell me something that I don't want, will say, hello, John? John, is that you? Are you having a nice day, John? Click. As though we were close personal friends. Friendship isn't a rabbit you yank out of a hat. Friendship. That is, if you have one, you know it takes hard work over a long time and out of many experiences. Well, the church isn't much better. Uh, they're going to sell us now a program called Friendship Evangelism, whereby you become a friend with somebody to win them to Jesus. Now, anyone who would say you got to wear a disguise and you got to sneak up on people to win them to Jesus, doesn't know much about Bible evangelism. But they're absolutely stupid about friendship. You don't exploit, manipulate, and use friends to advance your own agenda. I don't care what it is. Friendship, like everything else, becomes a beautiful thing in Christ's hands. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends, and you are my friend. Friendship always have more of it in it of giving than of getting, of loving than being loved, of going the extra mile for the other person, regardless of the cost, eagerly. And ungrudgingly. That's how you know the person is your friend. And friendship involves more than obedience. Obedience is for slaves, for servants, stock boys. Do this. Jesus calls you to something far warmer and more intimate. You are my friends. And then he says, I know your name. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep, and he calleth them all by name. That means that you are individually known, individually loved, and individually named. The shepherd assumes responsibility for getting us home. Misses us when we're not there. Waits for us when we lag too far behind. Comes looking for us when we're wayward and gone astray. Calling us by name. He does not treat you as one among many. Labels always lump people together. Not Jesus. Martha. Martha. You are careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. Simon, Simon, I have prayed for thee, thy faith fail not. 
My dear friend Philip, where are we going to get food to feed all these people? Thomas, do not be faithless, but believe me. And in the cemetery at Bethany, Lazarus come forth. He had to say Lazarus, or the whole cemetery would have come walking out of there. And on Easter morn, the Magdalene came to recognize him when she heard her name on his lips. Mary, why are you crying? Now, you will notice in the Bible, they never used Jesus or spoke to him by name. They always classified him among the sinners, publicans, Galileans, Samaritans. When Jesus befriended a fallen woman, they said, mm -mm, he cannot be a, a prophet because he doesn't know what kind of woman. She, get it? They had a pigeonhole. Uh, yeah, she's that kind. He opened the eyes of a man born blind. And in all the controversy that followed, the Pharisees never knew the guy's name. But then he was a blind man who wouldn't pay you to know him. Jesus never does that. The Bible says right at the start, it is not good that man should be alone. Please, it can never be your goal in life to need nobody. God made you to be you only as you open your life and you open your heart to others. There are people who are scared of everybody. They're paranoid. And there are others who are above everybody in haughty independence. You're missing out on life. On life itself. Please, people. you, you got to guard that. And if you don't have any friends, you got some work to do. Two. Be a friend of somebody. You can operate out of strength. But for somebody to be a friend to you, you got to own up to your weakness. And that's hard for us to do. Jesus needed friends. And he knew that he, somebody to loan him a boat to get to the other side of the lake. Somebody to give him a drink when he was thirsty. Somebody to borrow him and a donkey when he wanted to enter the city. To let him have an upper room for the last meal together with his friends. Jesus was not afraid to open himself and receive the kindnesses that others gave to him. We need that. And the minute you think you don't, you become less humble, less human, and less believable. At the Last Supper, Jesus prays. Well, do you know the name? The High Priestly Prayer. That baby is way out of my league. But five times in that prayer, Jesus cannot get away with it from it. He keeps coming back and coming back. He speaks about his friend. Those whom thou hast given me. Father, I thank thee for those whom thou hast given me. Father, please protect those whom thou hast given me because I have hopes for them and plans for them. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory. We think Jesus is God's gift to us. That's true. Jesus thinks that we're God's gift to him. Now, that's incredible. After all of his self-sacrifice, all Jesus gets 
is we are saved and he thinks that's a good deal. And he thanks God. For Where are you ever going to get a friend like Jesus? Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.